Hi everybody, in this episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to work with the A7S uh, Mark II and uh, very specifically going to be showing you how to get this camera set up if you're going to be doing the filmmaking. If you're going to be using it for shooting still images, that's one thing and there's a bunch of different setups procedures for that uh, to get the best uh, stills out of it. But this uh, tutorial is specifically on how to shoot video or using it for filmmaking and uh, cinemat cinematography, some of the best settings to, to get it ready to shoot a movie. Uh, so we're going to dive into the menus here. So first of all, uh, I'm going to turn the camera on. The on switch is found on the uh, top of the camera, on the right hand side here, if you flip it on the on switch. Another thing you're going to do to get this set up for movie mode here, is make sure that your dial is turned uh, to the movie uh, little icon right there, the little film icon right there. So i got this cage on, it's kind of blocking the little sight, there's a little line right there. So I'm going to rotate that and click it into place. And once that turns on, uh, I've got my screen here showing an image through my lens. Uh, I'm going to take, a, and right now the first thing that pops up is it saying no card. I'm going to put the little card in the side here. So right on the side of the camera here, right on the side of the camera here, you got this little slot that your card goes in. Pop that open and stick my card in. And right now, taking a look, look at my uh, menu, uh, what I'm going to do first of all, if you're taking this camera and you're kind of using it for the first time and you've had other people setting it up and using it, I would recommend taking it back to factory de defaults. I'm going to hit the menu key, and Sony has kind of a complex little system in here. Once you get used to it, it's not so bad, but they have a ton of different uh, selections in here. I kind of like their layout just because it, uh, they've got so many options that it kind of it might overwhelm some people, but uh, if you're kind of a Magic Lantern user, uh, it almost eliminates the need for so a software I like Magic Lantern, especially with the Canon cameras, because it gives offers so many options. You can use your wheels if you wish, and uh, let's show where the wheels are really quick. You do have a wheel on the back of the camera right here that your thumb can access right there to, to wheel, and this thing is going to take you through uh, the different menus and sub-menus here, and then you got the wheel that's on the front of the camera right here, and that wheel on the front of the camera there will take you up and down through the menus. So you're going to be using this for a certain function, and you're going to be using this one on the back for a certain function as well. There's that. They, they serve multiple functions, and we will get into that and talk about that. So first of all, and also you can use this, this little, uh, little push-button knob on the back here. If you push it to the right, it'll also go through your sub-menus, and then if you do up and down, it will go into side of other uh, sub-menus here. Right now, if you want to go through these uh, menu options up at the top here and quickly navigate between them, by the way, if you put your hand in front of this, sometimes it thinks it's your face looking through the eyepiece and it goes blank. So if that confuses you why it keeps shutting on and off, that is why and there is a way to shut that off. If you want to quickly navigate through each of the sub-menus up at the top, you can arrow up until it jumps onto one of those icons and then you can shuttle to the right and it will uh, quickly go through these through these main categories here. But here on this little, little toolbox at the end, I'm going to push this button in the middle. But right here on this toolbox, I'm going to arrow down so I enter these uh, submenus, and there are seven menus within the toolbox here. I'm going to move through these to the right until I get to setting reset and on the seventh one here. I'm going to push my button on here, and I'm going to go to a uh, camera settings reset. I'm going to move down and say initialize and say OK. It restores it everything to the default uh, settings, so I'm going to say OK, and it says um, performs and it asks you a couple times to make sure that you want to do this. So I'm going to say OK again. See, they should actually have a breathalyzer attached to this as well. Just make sure you're not, you haven't been drinking and you're going to automatically or you're going to accidentally reset your camera. So I'm going to say OK. And we're back to our setup menu. I'm going to hit on uh, English or whatever language you're using. Uh, you can set your date and time. And once I get all those set, go down to Enter. I give you a little advertisement. And we enter our screen here. Okay, so one thing you want to notice right away here is you got up in the top left-hand corner that little uh, film strip thing. So we are it's, we are specifically in movie mode. Uh, so that's really important if you're going to be shooting a film. Got a few other things on the screen here. We're going to be describing uh, right here. You've got uh, your codec that you're shooting under this card. If you're using an Atomos recorder, you probably want the card in as well, just so uh, that to help trigger recording. Down here we got auto white balance. We've got our spot metering. Uh, other things that are relevant to what we're going to be doing is ISO and you You've got kind of a little light meter that shows you uh, how many stops you are overexposed or underexposed. Uh, your f-stop, if you're using a, a lens that uh, has a digital uh, connection to it that you're digitally controlling. In this instance, I'm using the Rokinon lens. The Rokinon lens is a manual lens. It's uh, probably the best for uh, filmmaking are the, the manual lenses that you can just grab where the camera's not controlling the iris. 
where you can nicely slide your iris open and close as you see here let me slide that open see we're sliding open and close right now it's like autoing on everything and when you want to avoid doing auto stuff and you want to uh, go fully a manual function uh, when you're doing filmmaking and up here you've got manual focus and then your shutter speed down here so so let's go through these menu settings and show you how to set this thing up so I'm going to hit the menu key. This takes us into our menu and let's start looking through the things that we want to mess with here. Under the camera icon, the very first setting, you have nine menus under the camera setting. Uh, this one is specifically for still images. So we're just going to skip through that and not even worry about it. Now you get into file format. If you push your button on this, you're going to see the different types of formats. If you want to be shooting in 4K, especially right to the card here, you're going to want to shoot in the XAVC 4K video here. You're going to select that. And I'm going to arrow down and we're going to do the record setting. If you're shooting film and you're shooting a movie, uh, pretty much always I would say shoot 24p. That's the standard that, uh, standard film frame rate is uh, 24, progressive, 24 frames per second progressive scan. Uh, kind of simulating film and 100 megabits per second. So the highest quality that this card will shoot. And at 100 megabits per second, that is actually a really good quality for shooting onto a card. It is compressed. Uh, well, it is compressed to the Atomos as well, but there's a lot more color data that, data that goes into ProRes format that you're going to be using on the Atomos or the DNX format. Now, before we go any further here, there are a couple things I want to do. First of all, I want to get this annoying thing that's uh, making this uh, get, get the eyepiece from shutting my monitor off while I'm trying to do some settings here. I'm going to get out of the camera icon. I'm going to arrow up to highlight the camera, arrow to the right, and land on the settings here. Arrow down so I get into this menu, and we've got seven menus here in the setting. settings. I'm going to arrow through this really quick, and we're going to go to the third here. I'm going to go to Finder, Monitor, and we're going to go down to Auto, select that, and I'm going to turn it to Monitor Manual. So now I am on the Monitor Manual. If you're doing still photos, you want to go put this back onto Auto. Uh, but since I'm not, since I'm doing movies, I want my monitor to stay on the entire time, and now it will no longer go blank when you put your hand up here trying to set the menus, or your face for that matter. I'm going to arrow back up. I'm going to arrow to the left, go to my little movie mode, my go back to my camera icon here. And we're going to arrow down, go into this menu, and arrow to the right. We left off on number two. We're going to go to number three. We don't need this because this is working with flashes for still photography. We're going to move to number four here. And I'm going to turn all my settings onto manual here. We're going to go down to ISO. Notice when I was irising up and down, my ISO was changing. This is sensors, uh, basically the sensor's sensibility to light. And I'm going to change this because I don't want that like auto, uh, auto irising here. I don't want this the iris or the ISO or anything changing. I'm going to select this. I'm gonna, and now you can choose your own ISO. Now, depending on what format you're shooting in, you're going to have some of these uh, earlier settings of your ISOs uh, grayed out, depending on what format you're shooting in uh, for different reasons. I'm going to go down and choose ISO. I'm going to go to the native ISO of this camera, which is a ISO 800. And now as I iris up and down, you can still see it compensating a little bit. My ISO is no longer changing, but there is something that's compensating and changing. You have th three features that basically help you with exposure. You have ISO, which is your sensor sensibility. You have your f-stop, which is, which is dealing with your iris. And you have your shutter speed, which is uh, dealing with exposure time. Notice as it changes, your, auto, your shutter is automatically changing as well. My shutter is on auto right now as well. So I've fixed the ISO. That's fine. Let's go back into the menu. And I'm going to arrow over to the right. Go into menu 5, 6, and 7. Go over to 7. We're going to go back through some of these other menus here. But I want to get everything off of auto right now. I'm going to go down to my movie HFR mode here. We're going to select this. Right now it's on program auto. It's automating basically a whole bunch of functions uh, for shooting video. If you're doing like... Geez, like documentary or you're trying to get just b-roll and you, you have a lot of changing uh, light uh, this might be the way to go but if you're doing movies where you're controlling your light you're going to want to go into this and arrow this down to your manual exposure it has like also shutter priority and it has a uh, aperture priority same with the, the like when you're shooting still stuff uh, which is good in certain situations but for filmmaking everything manual auto nothing manual everything so now notice as i iris i'm sliding my iris on my camera up and down you don't see any sort of automation fixing it here and trying to get your uh, exposure to be properly exposed here uh, so now our iso is staying the same our shutter speed is remaining constant and we're good to go let's go back into our menu i'm going to arrow over to the left and let's go back through some of these menus here that we skipped so we hit iso we showed you how to change that to your so it's not on auto. I'm going to arrow over to the right again, and we're going to look at, and we're going to go down to auto white balance. Once again, we're going to shut off everything auto. I'm going to 
select that and we're going to go down and select what sort of color balance we want. You do have ones that you can uh, take a picture on a white card and it will balance for you. But if you're filming a, a movie, you will want to use uh, usually one of the two basics here. You've got your daylight and you've got your indoor. You've got indoor, outdoor. And you can actually dial in Kelvin as well. But right now, if you're, if, uh, you're either going to be using 3200 Kelvin, which is incandescent uh, tungsten, and you can use uh, daylight there to, kind of, to uh, fix your color temperature. Or you can move down to your Kelvin slider and you can dial in the exact temperature that you want. You arrow over to the right to enter that menu, and now you can arrow up and down. So now I'm in the Kelvin, and I can say, well, this light in here, I know this is, uh, this is fluorescent light around 4,000 Kelvin, so I'm going to select that. But yeah, like I said, usually the two types you're use, using in filmmaking, not necessarily all the time, but you're using uh, either 5,600 or 3,200, sometimes 4,000, depending on if you're under fluorescent lights or not. All right, let me hit my menu button here, and we're going to go back in. So our white balance is now taken off. We've dialed in our own color temperature. I'm going to arrow over to the right here. Also under menu number five here under the camera, I'm going to go down to picture profile. This is very important right here. Picture profile is going to help you get access things like S-Log in the camera, which is Sony log footage, which gives you a, very, a higher dynamic range. And makes your image look very flat, unless you're using something like um, like an Atomos recorder where you can record a LUT instead of what's called a LUT or a lookup table. We'll talk about that in my, in, in my Atomos episode. But we're going to arrow down here, and one of the profiles I really like on this is uh, number seven. Number seven's got, already got some presets that I like to use. If somebody's messed with these, by the way, I've got it set up the way I like. But if somebody's messed with these and you want to reset these, you go back down and hit reset. It will reset this picture profile back to the way it was. Hit complete, and I'm going to to go back up now, and uh, this is using S-Log2 right now and S-Gamut, the Sony versions of, of uh, making a very flat profile so you can do, have access to a higher dynamic range and also uh, it'll make it better to, to grade with. It won't bake in a, a, a bit, uh, like a too contrasty of a look or too saturated look. Um, but I'm going to use S-Gamut here. I'm going to move up to S-Log and I'm going to change this one to uh, the Cine 2 mode as one. You can look these up online and see what they do, but this one still offers kind of a flat gamma profile, um, but it also gives you, if you keep this on S-Log2, you're not going to have access to uh, uh, the lower ISO settings. I'm going to hit menu and go back. Uh, like I said, if this is on, if you keep that on the, on the Sony, on the S-Log2 uh, here, if I go into ISO, I think it stops like about 1200. It won't let you go be below 1200, but this gives you access to lower uh, ISOs here. I can go to 800, especially if you're shooting outside and you need to bring that way down. This takes it all the way down to, I think, 200. Oh no, it goes down to 100 there. It goes all the way down to 100 uh, if you're shooting outside. Uh, so I'm going to take this back up to 800, put it on my native ISO there, and there we go. Let's move on to the next settings here. So I'm going to hit my menu, get out of that, and I got my picture profile set up. Let's move along here. I'm going to skip 6, not much reason there. 7 we've already gone through. And one thing under number 8 here under the camera that uh, people uh, that some people don't like here is a steady shot thing. When you're trying to frame something in and you'll see it kind of compensating by moving it up and down a little bit, the image digitally, I usually turn this thing off and turn the steady shot off. So if you're trying to steady your shot, you get a gimbal or you get a dolly or you get something that you use in filmmaking instead of seeing that shot kind of coast up and down a little bit or back and forth. And nine don't necessarily need anything there. So I'm going to go back up, go to my settings, and let's go through a couple more settings here. You do have things like marker display and marker settings. If you want to set, if you want to set a safety zone, zone of guide frame, uh, you have those options there. You can mess with those. I'm going to go to two and look at peaking. Now peaking is going to help you with focus. If I'm going to, I'm going to go to my peaking level, I pretty much leave this on all the time. I'm going to go up and put peaking level, you can put it on high, medium, or low, whatever suits uh, suits you. And I'm going to go to peaking color and we're going to change this, uh, let's go to red. I'm going to change it to red. You can change it depending on what sort of color you're shooting on. Uh, but I'm going to hit menu and get out of this and bring us back to our camera here. What I can do though is here as I focus, you can see that peaking, the red colors here, come around that uh, the, the item that is sharply in focus. And you want to get as a heavy, con heavy heaviest concentration possible on uh, that peaking to be able to tell what is in focus. And that's what the peaking mode does as a focus assist. On our little settings icon here, I'm going to go to menu 3. We've already messed with this. I'm going to go to 4, 5, 6, and on six, we got our custom key settings. And this is very helpful as well if you want to change. And you can change what these things are going to do. We've got our C1, C2, our C3 key. 
and our C4 key, which is uh, set right now for our trash by default to, to delete files. But if you're going to be, but you can customize these keys to do what you want them to do inside of your menus here. I'm going to hit menu and get out of this. I'm going to hit C1 and let's see what C1 does. C1 brings up is set for doing color temperature. So that's really nice. You don't have to go and dig inside your menu and change your color temperature. You can just hit C1, it brings up your white balance, and you can go through, and we've already showed, shown Kelvin and how that works. I'm gonna hit C2. We showed you focus peaking. C2 is actually another type of focus assist. It zooms up on your image here and helps you get a really good critical focus. So now we've got uh, the peaking, plus the zoom gives us another additional uh, focus feature. So that's, I usually keep those two buttons the same. I really like those. Uh, but I'm gonna hit C2 and get out there. And I'm gonna hit C3 over here. And C3 says this lens is not supported. It's not supported because it's not a digital lens. It's gonna, be, it's gonna give you some other options, zoom options with your, with your, with lenses that have the digital read through, uh, but we're not using that type of lens. So I'm going to actually change this. I got the record button here on the side, and that's kind of weird to kind of push. I like using the C3 button. Some people don't like that, but uh, I usually change that. But let's show you how to change that setting. Select custom key settings. I'm going to go down to C3. I'm going to select that in its focus mode. It helps you do an automated, automated focus. I'm going to select this. I'm going to move down all the way down to where it says movie. I'm going to select movie. And now when I get out of this, and by the way, if you act like you're going to take a picture and just barely push your picture taking button up here on the top uh, right hand corner of your camera, just push it down barely, it gets out of the menu. That's a nice way of getting out of the menu quickly. Don't push it down all the way or it takes a picture. Uh, but now when I hit this button right here, it records. You see the record light going, I push it again, and it stops. Let's go back into the menu. So out of the menu here, if we hit this little trash, if we hit the little trash can, the C4 button, it doesn't do anything on screen. And what this does is when you're going through your play, through your footage, you can select your trash can to delete certain footage. But I'm not going to really even be going through that on this because we're setting up our camera for movie mode. And I usually don't delete clips off of my camera. I usually just record and then dump my cards off when I'm done. Back into menu. And that's how you custom set your, your, your menus. And you can also custom set your wheels. I kind of like the wheels, the, t the front wheel and the back wheel, where they're at. So going through the next setting, seven, there's not really anything interesting here. We're going to move along, and you got some things to work with your smartphone and computers. Going to skip through those. The next with your application list and introduction, and go to the, the play key here. The play key is going to help. It's a menu settings uh, to show how to play back your footage. Usually leave those alone because you can play back through them just with your play button here. But let's move over to our final settings here on the toolbox and go through these. Go from one to two, three, four. Now, 4 is going to have some interesting settings with your US, with your HDMI settings. If you're going to be sending output to something like your Atomos, you're going to want to go in and change them here, how to output that, that information. You'll want to set these to 4K as well if you're recording in 4K. But uh, we'll go through that in the next, in another demonstration on the Atomos. So I'm going to arrow through this. Right here, you've got Format. You're going to want to go here if you're going to want to format your card. Just select this, hit Enter, and it formats your memory card. And that's all formatted. So now my card is clean, and I can start recording. And you can actually do file naming, naming systems and everything else in here. You go under number six and hit version. It will show your, it will show your firmware. I would recommend updating to the latest firmware. As we are over, over, we already showed setting reset. So now that we've gone through all the important menu functions here, let's talk about things that are on screen here. You have your display right here on top. If you push that button up while you're on this main uh, view here, your display will go through different types of displays on your screen. So you hit uh, display again, it'll bring up a histogram here if you're trying to get a good exposure. You have two tools for exposure here. Right now, I've got my light meter here, and I've got my histogram here. Your light meter shows you uh, how many stops you're underexposed or overexposed here. Uh, and if you change, and if we push display again, it brings up this little um, this little levelometer. I'm not sure what it's called. It brings up this little level meter here to show you if your camera's level or not. And as you adjust the level on your camera, you'll see that thing kind of change the plane, change to help you know if your camera is level or not. If you use a tripod, that works just as well. If you got a bubble on a tripod, but that that is very helpful there. So as we hit menu again and get out of that, we come back to our, our main screen here. And some things to note on the screen here for uh, just finally getting our camera set up. Of course, you want to be in movie mode. 
your card shows you how much uh, time you have left to shoot onto it in that format. Uh, down here, we, as we move down, we got our picture profile, 7, which is good. Uh, we go down to our, this, which is our shutter speed. Our shutter speed is operated by this wheel on the back of the camera. As you roll that back and forth, and if you're using the front wheel, if you're using a camera, uh, if you're using a lens that has the digital connectors uh, between the, the, the lens and the camera, the front wheel will actually do your f-stop. Right now, it just goes red because I'm using a fully manual lens. But here on the back, I'm going to set my shutter speed. Standard shutter speed for film is going to be half exposure time. If you're shooting 24 frames per second, that is essentially 1 48th of a second uh, per frame. 1 48th of a second per frame for exposure time. And as I set that, the closest we can get is in increments of 10, so I set this at 1 50th. Now if we go to our display here and look at our histogram, we can see we are overexposed. This is kind of pushing far to the right. The right side of this histogram is overexposure. The left side is underexposure. We want to usually get kind of a nice little mountain in, in the middle of this. So as I iris down here, we can get kind of a good exposure here. And it says right there with this, the spot, kind of the spot meter turned in the middle here, it's saying my exposure for that area is an optimal exposure. And the histogram also shows that. So we can display out of that, get back to our main menu. And let's look at the other settings. We've got here, our ISO is set at 800. These things you want to double check before you start shooting and make sure that everything is the way you want them. And as we move up here, you've got 4000 on our Kelvin temperature. And we're using a spot meter here. And we can actually go inside our menu and change that spot meter if we wish. One other little thing to note up here is uh, this little metering option here. This shows you how it's uh, giving you your light meter readings based on what's called, uh, this one's called matrix metering here. And you also have spot metering and uh, center weighted metering, which are different types of metering. Uh, the matrix metering, well, let's go into these. And actually, a quick way of getting into that, I want to cover this function key here. You hit your function key, and it brings up access to some quick little items here to change, which is really nice. So uh, right here, we uh, we can arrow it around and find, land on our metering mode. We can select that and choose a different type of metering. We have the matrix metering, which does basically gives you a general uh, reading of your entire shot, uh, which is not always helpful if you have like a light over here in the corner and the light's blowing out a little bit, uh, then it will compensate by showing, it'll say that your shot is overexposed when the middle of your shot really isn't. So we can move down and we can do center. Center weighted is kind of like in the middle, but kind of anything in almost like this big circle around this area. And spot metering is going to be basically dead center. This is just the center portion right here. And you can actually see a little, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, there's a little gray spot right there that shows you what your exposure is for that specific spot. When you aim your camera and you want to test exposure, it'll show it right in that spot. And you can use uh, different ex you can use different meterings for different reasons, but uh, I usually keep it on spot metering because I kind of like to see what the exposure is at that little spot in the, in the center of the image right there. And those are all the settings. Uh, those are all the major settings for setting up your camera, and you should be ready to go and uh, for, for filmmaking. Uh, as I said, we're shooting in this type of cine format with the with, uh, that's uh, kind of similar to, to an S-log, is similar to a log format. Gives you a higher dynamic range, gives you more uh, access to the color information and the brightness information to uh, to grade your shot. So if you have any questions, please post them. And uh, afterwards, please watch the Atomos one as well if you're going to be using an Atomos, which I would highly recommend using with this camera. And thanks for watching.